Homage to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Today we're looking at the Katuviya Sutta. This is in Anguttara Nikaya, Chapter 3, Discourse Number 128. And in this teaching, the Buddha gives a simile about not polluting ourselves. So it begins with, on one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling in Baranasi, at the deer park in Isipatana. Then, in the morning, the Blessed One dressed, took his bowl and robe, and entered Baranasi for alms. While walking for alms near the cattle yoking fig tree, the Blessed One saw a dissatisfied bhikkhu, seeking gratification outwardly, muddle-minded, without clear comprehension, unconcentrated, with a wandering mind and loose sense faculties. Having seen him, he said to that bhikkhu, 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 do not pollute yourself. It is inevitable, bhikkhu, that flies will pursue and attack one who has polluted himself and been tainted by a stench. Then, being exhorted thus by the Blessed One, that bhikkhu acquired a sense of urgency. In this particular teaching, you can see that the Buddha comes across a dissatisfied monk, one who has loose sense faculties, that means the sense faculties are not restrained. And as a result of that, seeking gratification outwardly, looking for sukha in the world. As a result of that, muddle-minded, so there's no mindfulness in place, without clear comprehension, unconcentrated, and therefore with a wandering mind. So in many ways, when you hear this teaching, you could think of the Buddha coming across us when we're out in the world. We have these qualities where we're not restrained by our sense faculties. We're seeking sukha from the world. We're looking at things, listening to things, wanting to smell things, wanting to taste things, wanting to touch or experience different sensations. And of course, the mind becomes muddled, dull, covered, and of course, very far away from the qualities or the sense that the Buddha gives for making spiritual progress. So it's as if the Buddha comes up to us and says, don't pollute yourself. Flies will pursue and attack you if you pollute yourself and have been tainted by a stench. So we can look at it this way as if the Buddha is talking specifically to us. When the Blessed One had walked for arms in Baranasi after his meal, when he had returned from his arms round, he addressed the bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, this morning I dressed, took my bowl and robe, and entered Baranasi for alms. While walking for alms near the cattle yoking fig tree, I saw a dissatisfied bhikkhu, seeking gratification outwardly, muddle-minded, without clear comprehension, unconcentrated, with a wandering mind and loose sense faculties. Having seen him, I said to that bhikkhu, 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 do not pollute yourself, it is inevitable, Bhikkhu, that flies will pursue and attack one who has polluted himself and been tainted by a stench. Then, being exhorted thus by me, that Bhikkhu acquired a sense of urgency. When this was said, a certain Bhikkhu asked the Blessed One, What Bhante is meant by pollution? What is the stench? And what are the flies? Covetousness, Bhikkhu, is what is meant by pollution. Ill will is the stench. Bad, unwholesome thoughts are the flies. It is inevitable that flies will pursue and attack one who has polluted himself and been tainted by a stench. So the Buddha is giving us the meaning behind his simile. And it's very useful to really look at it. So he begins by saying, covetousness, abhija, is what is meant by pollution. We know that covetousness is about wanting, longing, desiring things, things that other people have, things that are out in the world. So that's what the Buddha means by polluting ourselves. When you think about covetousness, what we don't see is that it comes from a sense of lack. It is not satisfied with what one has. It wants more. And when you think about loose sense faculties not being restrained, when we look out into the world and we see all these things that people have and we allow the mind to be unrestrained, then covetousness is what is polluting our mind. We go onto social media and we see, oh, they had a holiday or they 
bought a new car or they have the latest phone or they have something new that's being invented that we haven't seen before or people are eating things in different places and it looks fancy or it looks enticing we get caught up in that that's when covetousness arises we see something attractive or something beautiful or something fair in what is really foul we fall for it we fall for the baits of the world same with magazines and TV programming and all the things that are meant to entice us. They're actually meant to entice us. That's why they're called marketing. And so that's how we pollute. Now, the problem is not on the external end. That's there. It serves its purpose and it, and it keeps going. The problem is what is arising in the mind, the pollution in the mind and the lack of restraint. It's good to look at this as how we pollute ourselves and the Buddha is encouraging us not to pollute ourselves to be very guarded careful what we allow to enter through our senses and into the mind and then the second one is ill will is the stench ill will we know as resentment as dislike aversion and when ill will arises it's very quick Sometimes what is very true is this stench is right on the surface, particularly if we are coveting certain things and it doesn't come our way. When any situation doesn't go our way, ill will is the one that steps in. And there is a link between the hindrances. When you think about sensual desire, which is very similar to covetousness, you know, wanting to gain something, and ill will. In fact, the pathway that goes from covetousness goes straight to ill will. When things slide, the experience slides, then we slide into ill will. We're unhappy with the decline in sukha. And so that is the stench. And so when you think about covetousness and ill will, many of us move between the two. The sense of lack and wanting and a sense of unhappiness and aversion, resentment. These two actually go hand in hand. Dukkha arises and then sadness out of both of those when they kick in. We foster unwholesome thoughts. These are the flies. We're always thinking, I wish I had that. I don't want that person to have that. Why are they having that? Why can't it come to me? And then the ill will is, I don't like what is going on in the world. I don't like my circumstances. So the mind gets infested in many ways, attacked, as the Buddha says, by flies, pursued by flies. They are, they are swirling around us. Inherently, we spend a lot of time in unwholesome thoughts and we indulge in them. There's something that is enticing around them. It's important for each of us to really look at this particular simile, how we pollute ourselves how we acquire the stench, and how we are pursued by the flies. When the Buddha talks about seeing a dissatisfied monk, then look at ourselves, how much dissatisfaction, unhappiness do we have? And it comes from this kind of concoction. The idea is if you remove the covetousness, like restrain the sense faculties and be okay being in metta, having that quality of simplicity, living a modest life, being okay with that, being easy to support, and then letting go of all that ill will, not wanting to do the slightest wrong to anybody, not wanting to harm anybody. And then ill will is that stench that if you don't covet so much, then there's less to have ill will towards. You don't respond to the decline in sukha. Instead, you're okay with what is not seeking extreme exuberance in the world. And ill will has less of a tendency to arise. Being okay with things being slightly dull and boring, not so exciting, then less to fall from in terms of that decline, not so steep. And then the flies won't pursue us. Instead, when there is happiness in the mind, contentment, calm, peace, it's a very different situation and scenario. And that's what we need to be aspiring to in this spiritual path. Not to indulge, not to be dissatisfied, 
not to allow these defilements to take hold. The Buddha is very clear about abandoning unwholesome thoughts because once you start to allow them in, they tend to multiply and you become habitually infested with unwholesome thoughts, pursued by flies, as the Buddha would say. So there's something in this that one needs to look at that can be very useful. And part of it is being honest about how much we indulge in unwholesome thoughts, how much we don't restrain our sense faculties, how much we are okay with being resentful, having aversion in place, operating from a sense of ill will. So this is the encouragement from the Buddha. And then the Buddha says, the flies, thoughts based on lust or desire, will run in pursuit of one, unrestrained in the sense faculties, unguarded in the eye and ear. A bhikkhu who is polluted, tainted by a stench, is far from Nibbana and reaps only distress. Whether in the village or the forest, the unwise foolish person, not having gained peace for himself, goes around followed by flies. But those accomplished in virtuous behavior, who delight in wisdom and peace, those peaceful ones live happily, having destroyed the flies. So the first thing is really about desire, craving. When you seek outwardly things from the world based on desire, wanting, longing, and you have unrestrained sense faculties, you're not guarding them, then you get polluted. Your sense faculties get soaked and then there is no happiness in the mind. And so when you're polluted like that, the stench comes, the aversion, the resentment, the ill will. So you're very far from Nibbana. And what the Buddha says is that you re reap distress. So sadness, sorrow, lamentation. That is what one dwells in. You're dwelling unhappily, dwelling negligently. If you think about the Pamada Vihari Sutta, this is the sutta that resonates with this. When we dwell ne negligently, then we pollute through our sense faculties. When this happens, you don't have happiness, you don't have rapture, the body doesn't become tranquil, and of course you don't become calm and concentrated. And as a result of that, you don't see the truth of things. So this is what the Buddha calls dwelling negligently. So it's something that we've been through before. But when you are guarded in the sense faculties, you don't fall for the baits in the world. You don't run off polluting the mind, polluting through the other sense bases, absorbing all the sense objects. Then one can dwell happily. One can have happiness in the mind. The mind has rapture. Then the body gets tranquil. One can become calm and concentrated and you see the truth. You dwell vigilantly. So this is what the Buddha means by someone who is wise and not foolish and gains the peace. So it doesn't go around followed by flies. The mind is in a happy place, peaceful place, not wanting for more. There's no sense of lack. So when the bhikkhu received that teaching directly from the Buddha, he quickly ran off with a sense of urgency. And this is our takeaway from this, that the Buddha is teaching us, very similar to the monk, when we exist in this world, right now, there's so much of this, that we are polluted in our minds. We are having this sense of lack. For whatever reason, whatever situation we find ourselves in, economic hardship, financial worries, war, pandemic, job loss, sickness in the family, whatever it is, these external circumstances impinge on us. But what the Buddha is saying is it's important not to come from a sense of lack and not to pursue things out of desire, but to keep the sense faculties restrained, to not pollute ourselves so that there is no stench and we are not pursued by flies. We are not harnessing, indulging, being swayed by unwholesome thoughts. This is the time not to shake with that, to be very clear about abandoning unwholesome thoughts. Only when you abandon unwholesome thoughts is there peace, is there calm. And when you go through different teachings of the Buddha, the words that the Buddha gives are very strong. He uses words like dispel, abandon, obliterate, crush, 
when it comes to unwholesome thoughts. So it's not a case of sitting back, allowing them to be there, allowing them to sway us, allowing them to darken the mind and then to fall down with them, to be crushed by those thoughts and to operate from those thoughts. No, the Buddha is very clear about how we make effort, right effort, how we strive on this path. So this is a very nice short teaching where the Buddha is giving us some encouragement to increase our sense of urgency towards how we practice. So this can be done in meditation. You can reflect on this, contemplate these very few words from the Buddha, that not to pollute ourselves, not to allow a stench, and therefore not to be pursued by flies. We can turn that around in our minds and contemplate them in the meditation. But in daily life, to really take those words to heart, to make sure we restrain our sense faculties, be cautious around what we take in, how much concern we have for others, what they're doing, what they have, how much we pollute through the news, through the media, through TV programming, through other means and forms, through discussions. What is it that is harming? And to be very careful because a lot of these things, once you soak your mind in it, it brings your mind down. All you can have in your mind is unwholesome thoughts. Unwholesome thoughts towards politicians, unwholesome thoughts towards global organizations, unwholesome thoughts towards people, various groups. Where is the metta when all of that is there? It is being challenged. It's very divided when it comes to the mind like that. So this is the encouragement from the Buddha. This is a very short teaching, but offers a lot for us to work with. So we can end the session here. Let's share the merit with all sentient beings. May all beings be happy and well. May all beings be free from suffering. Blessings of the Triple Jam. Wishing you well. Deruan Saranai.